This is Josh Rosen of Air Plant Man, a landscape architect and obsessed with air plants. Thought I would give everyone a little behind the scenes peek at my uh, personal plant playground. So we're gonna see a lot of Tillandsia today. Uh, Tillandsia are epiphytes in the Bromeliadaceae family. They've got this amazing ability to grow with no soil at all. And so they are um, really diverse. You've got over 600 different types and they have different colors, um, leaf textures, and really incredible flowers as well. And what's fun about them is they've just, uh, they can float in air. They grow in treetops and on rock faces in the wild. and. Uh, can be used in fun display ideas that we've sort of uh, been working on the last few years, developing vertical gardens. And then you can see hanging up here is our lantern, uh, air plant lantern. And so they love good air circulation, bright filtered sunlight and um, uh, getting wet by spraying or soaking. And you can see they've got all sorts of different interesting bloom types and so this is the inflorescence coming up and then the blooms come out sequentially one at a time over the course of several weeks. This is a um, flabellata, Tillandsia flabellata. Yeah, these are all in the Tillandsia family. This one's a little burnt up from the sun. You can see some clumps. I believe this is Tillandsia remota, so it got some leaves in it. And each one of these is a separate pup that could be separated, or they can continue to grow as one uh, large clump. Um, the cycle kind of goes from flowering to um, the flowering dying. And we've actually got some really great examples of what happens next. I don't know if you can see up there or up here is a really good example. Um, that fluffy stuff is Tillandsia seeds ready to catch the wind and wherever they land um, they'll start to grow a new new air plant. So these are our air plant frames that give them great air circulation that they really like. Here's a really cool bloom on this uh, I think it's a Shidiana cross. So these hybridize really easily as well and uh, you can get so many cool shapes and colors. But I don't only have air plants in my garden. Um, I've got a lot of other cool stuff I like, so I'll quickly walk you through some of my favorites. Um, this is a really neat vine called um, Herald's Trumpet, or the Nepal Creeper. It's Beaumontia grandiflora, and it's uh, a vine that gets a nice woody trunk over time. Those really deep green leaves, quite a vigorous climber, um, takes sun or part shade. Um, of course, Salvia Clevelandii with that great fragrance. We've got some Mexican fence post uh, cacti, um, Pachycereus marginatus. This is a really neat um, desert adapted ficus. Ficus petiolare, and I just love that red veining and the new leaves, and it gets kind of a cool cautiform base with time. Um, I've got a number of different Plectranthus in here as well. These are South African, um, I believe they're mint relatives, and they've got really intense fragrances, um, different ones uh, for different um, species. But this guy over here with the big green leaves is um, Plectranthus barbatus and uh, over here is Plectranthus neocalus, um, referring to the lobster, lobster flower is the common name um, that that one has as well. Um, here's a really neat South African, uh, Phylica pubescence or featherhead. The new growth is just so soft and silvery and when it's in bloom, um, it's really quite remarkable. Um, a couple other fun plants in the corner here is my Michelia. This is a tropical magnolia relative, Michelia champaca, and it has really great fragrant flowers, uh, nice vertical form and those lime green leaves, um, taking part shade or sun. Um, you can see a big specimen Tillandsia hanging out there in the corner. Back here, we've got my staghorn fern, platycerum. 
Um, these are really cool epiphytes, uh, also epiphytes like the Tillandsia. Epiphyte just meaning that it grows upon other plants or other, other things, so it does not need to be uh, in touch with the ground like a normal terrestrial plant would. Waiting for the plane to cross. And you can see above us here is this quite uh, mature and large uh, Cape honeysuckle, again from South Africa, from the Cape region, Tecomaria capensis. Forms a really great sprawling hedge. You can trim it up into sort of almost a tree type shape. Um, and the hummingbirds just love those flowers. So those are great. Um, we've got some cool things back in here. This is a Kalanchoe, and I'm forgetting its uh, species right now. It's uh, edible medicinal Kalanchoe, although I haven't had the heart to try it yet. And then here's a Kalanchoe bararensis uh, uh, cultivar with the smaller leaves. Um, really fuzzy and nice feeling. We've got a philodendron rojo back in here, philodendron with that great red color. And then back in here is another one of my favorites, the uh, rabbit's foot fern, Phlebodium uh, aureum. Um, got those great big uh, textured leaves. One of the larger Tillandsias that I've got are these Tillandsia novaceae. They've got that great purple color um, the entire year. Um, a lot of the species you'll notice, I'll look for a good example, um, kind of get this intense uh, reddish color to the foliage when, um, when the sun is on them and when they come into bloom. And that's called blushing, and it's basically where the entire plant acts like uh, a flower. Actually, you can see it really nicely here with these Tillandsia volutina. Um, the way the entire leaf is turning red but this is actually the same genus, not in bloom, um, or same species. And so they go back to that green color when they're not flowering. Here's a really nice bloom from uh, Tillandsia prunosa. And then it's quite exciting. Our xerographicas are in flower now. You can see those cool shapes there. So we've got some now here's the frame where I get the most requests. Can I uh, have one of those big white ones? And I always tell people, no, this is Tillandsia tectorum. Um, really one of the most spectacular Tillandsia. And it's got really fuzzy appearance to it. And that is from um, trichomes, which cover its leaf surface. Now all Tillandsia do have these trichomes and they're used for moderating uh, water absorption and, and keeping water inside. And they reflect the sunlight and um, lay flat on the plant when it's wet, allowing water to enter the leaves. So um, it's a really neat ad adaptation. And this particular um, species from uh, the high mountain regions in um, South America is in a very hot, dry, um, intense UV environment. And so the fuzziness is an adaptation to allow uh, Tectorum to survive in, uh, in this environment. You can see some cute little flowers of the Salanzia prunosa coming out as well. But yeah, this frame has been real fun and I hadn't seen them, uh, the Tectorum bloom too much before. Here's the old bloom spike and here's a new one just coming out. You can see with the uh, nice pink color and individual tiny white flowers will emerge one by one over a period of time. So moving on through the garden, I'm really excited about this. So new addition, the Sobralia orchid. It's uh, got this, um, it's in, in the orchid family, but it uh, has this beautiful bamboo-like foliage, which I think is really neat. And uh, they can be three, four feet tall, and um, they come from Mexico. And um, I'm quite excited to try them out. So um, just got these guys about six months ago, and this is our first bloom. Um, I've heard the blooms are particularly short-lived, so I'm keeping an eye on this one. This all just appeared in the last day. Quite excited to see what emerges from there. Um, you can see those lanterns again up there. Those are really got a lot of color in the foliage from how much sun they're getting. Sun being a major factor for um, bringing on blooming and uh, giving uh, color to the foliage. Fun little uh, guy I just got. This is Agapedes serpens. It's uh, 
Himalayan blueberry relative. And so this can grow epiphytically in trees. I've just got it growing in some sphagnum moss. It has the most uh, amazing blooms. There's none, none on it right now, but it has these pendulous little, um, they look uh, hard to describe, but agapedes is the name, or agapedes, depending on how you say it. And this is uh, the species serpens. And back here, I've got the Mexican weeping bamboo, the Odatea acuminata, um, really neat. And there's some new, new giant stalks coming up here I'm quite excited for. Um, and then over here, maybe my favorite terrestrial plant is um, the silver tree. This is Leucodendron argentum. And this grows um, in the Cape region in South Africa. And uh, they have a, a lot of them at the Kirsten Bosch Botanic Garden in Cape Town. And it backs right up onto Table Mountain where these are endemic. And you get to see them both in the garden and then in the wild. And it's really quite special. It can form a really large tree over time. Um, unfortunately, extremely sensitive to drainage. And so there are too much water at the wrong time of year can kill it easily. I'm uh, trying it in a pot after a couple of failures, but I'm not gonna, not gonna stop trying. Um, got some cool epiphytic cacti here in the Ripsellidaceae tribe. And, um, oh, there's a really cool Tillandsia back here. I'll take down, this is a Tillandsia secunda, one of the larger ones. And look at this bloom spike, just goes on and on. Really, really amazing. Super excited for that to open up. Really cool. All right, what else? We got lots more to see. So, um, a really neat vine is this guy over here, and I just love how it looks against the blue of uh, the house here. And uh, this is a kebia. Um, it's the chocolate vine, and it has really cool flowers that have a chocolate aroma to them. Um, that's really cool. Um, we've got some more Talantia novaciae with that cool purple color. And up here is one of the rarer plants, at least for Southern California. It hasn't taken off, but it hasn't died yet. It's um, uh, Huperzia squarosum, and I just love that lime green of the the new foliage there I thought is really cool. And these form giant tassel, tassel fern is the common name, giant hanging uh, masses over time. We'll see if I get that lucky. Um, and yeah, this is my world back here. Some more Plectranthus. I love uh, fragrant fragrant plants. So if you rub this leaf, it has an amazing scent. This is Plectranthus amboinicus. Really cool succulent back here. Kalanchoe bracteatus. It has great orange flowers and uh, those really clean, clean whitish leaves. Here's a guy just finishing blooming and it's actually a cautiform called Syningia. I don't know if you can see down there. It's got that nice big, big cautiform base and these large fuzzy leaves. Um, Syningia is um, the Latin name and that's a really cool one. And see this large arcing Talansia latifolia back here sending up its flower spike. That's going to be cool. And so that's uh, just a couple of things in the garden. All right, one or two more. Adenanthos or woolly bush may be my favorite, despite all the other favorites I showed you. This is uh, a silver haze cultivar. It's an evergreen Australian plant that grows in coastal regions and uh, just has that really soft, huggable look to it. Um, this is a dwarf cultivar that stays a little tighter and lower, but the, the full-size straight species Adenanthos cerisius can get six, eight, even 10 feet tall with time and uh, either be hedged or left natural. You can see the um, Stephanotis floribundus back here, the uh, Madagascar jasmine, this one smells really good as well. Um, neighbor's camellia reaching in. Um, the, when that's in full bloom, it's really quite nice. And so thanks for uh, visiting my garden for a minute. We didn't even get to the, uh, the front. Save that for next time. Uh, thanks for visiting. This is Josh from Airplant Man. See you guys next time.